What's different about the Birch Camp? Everyone getting off this bus either has the AIDS virus or lives with someone who does. Hey, hey, hey. And you won't just see children here. At the Birch Camp, the whole family is invited. Hey, what's up, John? How you doing? <laughs> John and his mom, Chris Costantini, are both HIV positive. To watch John at camp, you'd never know he was battling such a debilitating virus. Friends you have here have the same kind of disease you have. Mm -hmm. Does that make it make you closer friends than with mm -hmm. the people outside? Mm -hmm. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Safer. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Steve Croft. I'm Leslie Stahl. Those stories and Andy Rooney tonight on 60 Minutes. If it's the middle of winter, why are we getting ready to tell you about something that happened last summer? More specifically, about something that happened last summer at a summer camp. Doesn't everyone know all there is to know about summer camps? Not about this one, they don't. What's different about the Birch Camp? Everyone getting off this bus either has the AIDS virus or lives with someone who does. And you won't just see children here. At the Birch Camp, the whole family is invited. It's a week in the country, all expenses paid. Welcome back, welcome back, buddy. We zoom in. We go right in, you know, love, affection. You know, we go right there immediately, you know. Mark Snorton has been a counselor at Birch for three years. You know, because we don't, we have ten days. I mean, we don't have any time to wait. We go right there day one. Give me a hug, give me a kiss, come here. Yeah. You know, I don't care, you know, about any of the other stuff. Mark is one of 96 counselors who give up a week's vacation from their regular jobs, ranging from doctor to disc jockey to marketing assistant. They all come to camp to show some very sick kids a very good time. Now in its sixth year, Camp Birch was created by Phyllis Susser, who heads Birch Services, an agency in New York City that runs schools and programs for people with developmental disabilities. Birch rents these campgrounds for one week each summer. And this is the time for you not to think about what you're going to cook for dinner, or are you going to shop? and you don't have to wash the dishes, and you don't need to worry about what time you're going to give medication, and you have only one thing to think about, and that is to be at peace, to have fun, to rest, and to know that there are no secrets here. These people were living in the middle of the city, in the middle of the Bronx, they were on the streets of New York, which, which were hot and steamy and dirty, and there was nowhere to go, and we needed to remove them from what was not a happy, not a pleasant en environment where they could absolutely rest and feel supported and secure and safe in a setting where they weren't being judged, where they weren't being hated, where they weren't being feared. Okay, go ahead, do some more. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, man. You my head now? Birch looks just like any other summer camp, complete with arts and crafts, silly games, and campfires. And that's exactly the point of it, because while it's true the infirmary here is a lot busier, this is not a week about sickness. It's a week about fun. I come here because it is the way I'd like, paradoxically enough, the way I'd like the world to be. Counselor Lee Stern is a writer. This was his fifth year at Birch. I mean, we're, we're here because of the most awful thing that we can imagine, and we create the most ideal community. And it's a community of fun and joy and light and music and running and uh, playing. What's your name? Introducing... SWA Sisters with Attitude. Sisters with Attitude! Hey, hey. At camp, it doesn't of matter, of matter of who's infected or affected. Marie Williams is the foster and adoptive mother of five kids, three of whom are infected with the HIV virus. Erica is her oldest. We are all here as one big family. We eat together, we sleep together, 
We bowl together. Uh. We shop together. <laughs> you know, we do things together. Don't take your meds. From the day they arrive, the kids become the responsibility of the counselors and the camp's expert medical team. Ready for the next one. Pink stuff. Pink stuff. Pink stuff. Pink stuff. Oh, oh, we almost done. There are four doctors and three nurses at birth. They're all volunteers. And they all try very hard to make the worst part of the day as painless as possible. Okay. You have to take a lot of medicine? Yes, more medicine than everybody in the camp. Erica seems to know that camp is a safer place to be sick. Back home, it's something she keeps to herself. Are any of the kids in school afraid of you because you have AIDS? No. None of they them? They don't know. They don't know? None of them know? Nope. No. None. Do you feel like you have a secret? I always had a secret. That way, they won't say, like, if you tell your friends, they might go, yeah, I don't want to touch you. And stuff like that. That's what That's happened. why I keep my secret. You know, I almost lost her this year. And um, it opened my eyes to say, wow, you know, this disease is a son of a gun and it's and it's hurting it's hurting everybody it's hurting everybody so when we come to camp it's we know it's there come on we can't forget it but we can put it on the back burner that's what the counselors here are trying to do put aids on the back burner for a while they work 16 hour days to keep the kids active and entertained these kids bring me so much joy this is Amy Hubbard's fourth summer at Birch. The rest of the year, she works in marketing. You gonna help me? They run me ragged. And I go to bed every night, my head hits the pillow, and I can't believe that I've made it through another day. But I wake up in the morning, and I see these little smiles, and they look at me, and they say, you know, good morning, Amy, I love you. And I realize that all of the heartache and all of the, you know, exhaustion, it is worth every bit of it. Who's your favorite counselor? Amy. John and his mom, Chris Costantini, are both HIV positive. To watch John at camp, you'd never know he was battling such a debilitating virus. Dad, I, I was sick once in a while. And, and what happens? I get tired, I get headaches. But running or resting, for John, mm. camp is everything, home is not. You don't have a lot of friends in the neighborhood? At uh, my neighborhood? Mm-hmm. No. What about here at camp? I have a lot of friends. Mm. And the, the friends you have here have the same kind of disease you have. Mm hmm Does that make it, make you closer friends than with mm -hmm. the people outside? Mm hmm See you later. I'm going to be outside. I understand. Later, I'm going to come out. Yes. John's mom barely made it to camp this year, having just had major brain surgery. Each summer, she's sicker, and John is more and more reluctant to let her out of his sight. He's very scared that I'm going to die, so that's what's so hard for him. Before him? Mm-hmm. That fear is him, you don't know. He don't even want to go anywhere without knowing. If I'm sick, he don't even want to go to school. So, it's hard for him. Uh, we got a pill for you. Oh, yeah. I got, uh, you ever get sad seeing some of these kids? I mean, you must have seen kids here who aren't here today. Yeah. Who are dead. Mm -hmm. Yes. The kids get sick. Some kids die, you know. But if we can make a difference in their life as they're here today, that's what I think is so special about our summer project. It's, it's about ch it making a difference right now because tomorrow was never promised. Right now is all we ever had. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. All that affection creates a sense of safety here, in which parents can sometimes take the hardest steps. Orlando Garcia asked the camp director, Elliot Kagan, 
to be present when he told his eldest son that he was the only one in the family who isn't infected with the HIV virus. I sat there and I said, okay, Orlando, I'm going to explain to you why, why we go to camp. Why is it that we go there? First of all, your mother is sick. She's HIV. And then me and then Melissa. And when I said that, he said, Melissa too? I said, yes. I said, but you're fine. You're okay. And then he just sat there for a little while. And when I saw that, it was like real, real hard. It was the, the hardest thing I ever done in my life. How do you decide who comes to camp? With tears. <laughs> you decide with a great deal of anguish and agony. I would say that the hardest decision about camp is to whom do you say no? Last summer, they had to say no to 65 families. They only had enough money and space for 30. Birch depends on contributors who give only on a year-to-year -year basis. Its goal is to someday be able to own and run a year-round facility. There has to be a way to reach out to these people and to help them understand that this world is not so terrified of them and is not so angry and, and hostile at them that there, that there is help, that there is help out there. The last night of camp is always celebrated with the annual talent show. Both the campers and the counselors participate. But the party is bittersweet because it signals that another year at camp is coming to an end. The next day, parents start loading bags onto the buses and everyone knows it's almost time to say goodbye. At that moment, there's a big reality check. You know, will you see some of these kids again? Will you see some of these parents again? Will you be at a funeral in a couple of months? It's a, it's a real reality at that moment. What's it like here on the last day? Tears is the word. It hurts. Um, and, oh, it makes and your heart hurt. I'm going to be a mess when these kids leave. And I'm a mess every year when they leave. But I'm going to be a special mess when they leave this year. I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's you know, they, they get on the bus and, you know, and they are going. And there we all are, waving goodbye and crying our eyes out, all of us. And I'm going to see you really soon. Okay. What's the best you can hope for? Best I can hope for? Mm -hmm. Another year. From my heart, that's how I feel. If I make it another year, I'm okay. If you make it another year, you'll get to camp another year. That's it. <laughs> we'll be here. <laughs> So, one week after they arrive, they're back on a bus going home. Tired, but full of memories of Birch Camp, a place where special kids are allowed to feel ordinary for a change. Three weeks ago, John's mother, Christine, died. She was 38 years old. Do you feel like you have a secret? I always had a secret. That way, they were safe. Like, if you tell your friends, they might go, Yeah, I want to touch you. And stuff like that. That's what That's happened. That's why I keep my secret. Sixty minutes from now, an all-new Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation. But first, can Angela Lansbury save a beautiful singer from a star-stalking madman? You'll be guessing till the final minutes of this new mystery on Murder, She Wrote, next.